Hello, my dear listeners. May God, in His endless mercy and compassion, may come and bless your life and to make of your life the blessing which is the greatest blessing, is the blessing of blessings, to make of you a fountain, the fountain in which will flow waters for eternal life and for your relatives and friends and to those who are around you among your circle of friends and that they may see God's glory in your life that they may see the, the peace that God has given you and that you be an instrument of God's glory in this world. We have been speaking about the conquest of the promised land. And to conquer the promised land, God chose a man by the name of Joshua. And Joshua, with, with everything that was happening, he was sad because his friend and leader, Moses, had died. So God came to Joshua saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Be of good cheer and arise and cross this Jordan which was the river, you and all your people that is with you, and conquer the promised land that I have sworn. So, when a person stops to think in a natural way, they think like this, if God promised to give a pro the promised land, the land of Canaan to Israel, so it would be easy. It would be just come to this land and live there and to dwell there, right? So that is natural way of thinking. But God, He promised, God gave the promised land, indeed, but this promised land had to be taken possession of because it was occupied by the intrusion of the Canaanites. So they had to fight. They had to fight with weapons and expel the enemies so that now they could dwell in that land, so that they could live in it. But the problem was that the people of Israel, they came from slavery. So they expected a land to raise their family. They wanted to have peace. They wanted to have a king. They wanted to have a city. They wanted to have their social life and develop their life in that land, of course. So, Israel's vision, of the people of Israel's vision, was a right vision. They wanted a place where they could call home. But, of course, the vision that God has given us is more than that. Because they conquered the promised land because God had promised and gave and fulfilled His words. But the people of Israel became corrupted. And throughout the history of Israel, although they were living in the promised land, they turned their backs to God. They lost their faith to God. They surrendered themselves into sin, into a life of promiscuity, and they went, they went away from God. And from these people, the Son of Man was born, the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus, He also promised a land which is great. He says like this, I came, I came, that you may have life and life more abundant. It is written in John 10.10. 10. So, God, He wants you to have a life that is blessed, a life that is worthy, a life of quality, because those who serve God, they must live a life of quality, right? So, the people... Many times they think and they lose focus. They think that to have a life with abundance, it means to have a luxurious life. 
It means to have so much money, so much richness that they want to live enjoying life. And that's not God's project for us, because for what He promised was indeed an abundant life, a life of quality, a life worthy of living, but not a life complacent or not a life with, with luxury. No. If you perhaps taken possession of God's blessings financially that God has, has promised, so these financial blessings you conquer must be available for God's kingdom. It is for God's kingdom. It is for God's glory. So with this sum of money that you have been making, you have to put it for the preaching of the gospel so that other people who are dying, so that those who are hungry may also have the same privilege that you today have, that you know the truth and the truth has set you free from the spiritual ignorance. And now you're taking possession of God's blessings. And, of course, these financial blessings, I repeat, they are not for you to live a life of, of luxury only. Because if you live like that, you're going to be like Israel. Israel ended up committing promiscuity, doing bad things against God. And this is the case of many people. And the same goes, if one gives an undeserving person an advantage, he will misuse it. And it's a fact. All kind of people that win the lottery, for instance, they lose themselves because it's a lot of money that they cannot handle. They do not know how to deal with the money. And because they never had it, they, they start buying things, they start doing things. And you know what, what I'm trying to say. So, God wants you to have an abundant life financially speaking, so that this abundant life may, so that this abundant life may also meet the need of those who don't have. That's why Jesus says that you who have your uh, an extra cape, give to someone who don't. So God gives us everything, but we must share with what He has given us with those that are in need. So, the vision of abundance and the plenitude of life is not in this world. It is not with the pleasures of this world, but it is for the future of our salvation, of our soul. Imagine if a person has a precious jewel what do they do? Normally, they keep it inside of a safe or they put it in a deposit box. When they have a special property, they protect that property. They put all protection needed on those items that they have. But they will die and will take nothing with them because the coffin has no drawers to it, right? So, there are people who think on the now and then. But those who have the Holy Spirit, they take care and they protect the most special treasure that they have, which is their salvation. Like, for instance, a person, they, when they have the Spirit of God, they take care of their salvation. And then they also want others to be saved. Because those who are saved want to save. It's, it's my case. Every day we are working, we are preaching, we are sowing the seed. Everything that I have, everything that I have in all senses is all placed in the gospel, in the preaching of the gospel of my Lord and Savior. 100%. When they say, ah, Bishop Marcelo is filthy rich. He is making others poor and becoming rich himself. I am rich because I have conquered the greatest treasure that Jesus says in his words. He said that the kingdom of heaven, which is salvation, the kingdom of heaven is similar to a hidden treasure in a field. 
that one found he hid it and for his joy sells everything he has and conquers and buys that field. And I bought it. I acquired it. So I am rich. Very rich. And there is nobody more rich than I am. And whoever is listening to me right now, those people who are on Instagram, only to criticize. So, let it be known to all of you. I am the richest man in the face of the earth because I carry within me this special treasure, a treasure which will not be left here on earth. And it's a treasure that will guarantee, that guarantees my eternal life the salvation of my soul, because my body will stay behind, will deteriorate, but not my soul. My soul shall live forever. And what I seek to do is to also bring the same richness to everyone else. I am sharing with you, my dear listener, you who hate me, you hate me, you hate me for nothing because I am successful, because my father is blessing me. I have no fault if you are like Cain. Cain was cursed because his offering did not please God, but Abel was blessed. So, I am blessed because of the Lord, but all those as well that received the Holy Spirit and they preserve their integrity, they preserve their spiritual and moral way of living, they preserve their desires to do the will of God, to exercise God's will in this earth as long as they live. So these are also rich as I am and also want to save other souls. What makes us sad is to see people that we love, people that are so close to us, and they are losing themselves. They don't understand. They don't want to receive this treasure. They are only having their eyes in the promised land But we have our vision in the promised land, which is eternal, where our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, lives. So, dear listener, when, when a person has something so, so precious, they invest, they protect, they insure it, right? But... That will stay behind. This earth will catch on fire. And whatever is going to be left behind will also be caught on fire. But the soul, my dear listener, is more precious. So instead of you putting all your focus on the promised land like the children of Israel, did on a physical land, put your faith in the new Canaan, which is in heaven, because there you are going to have your soul permanently, eternally, together with your Father, with our Father. All right? Tomorrow we are going to speak more about this, but I wanted to talk to you about it, because I understand that the precious treasure that God has given us is so precious, so precious, that we, that we cannot just be distracted or distract ourselves with this world. We must protect it at all costs. May God bless you and all your family in Jesus' name. Amen.